Voxwave now features a streaming radio media player on our website's front page where local artists can get their music played 24 7. For more information on getting your music in rotation or to perform live at our studio, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. Android users, the Voxwave app is now available in the Google Play Store. Download the app today on your Android device to listen in and view programs. Business owners, looking for a place to advertise your business and promote your products and services? Voxwave is the right place. We have over 10,000 views a day and 70,000 listeners a month. For more information, contact Reg Gaskins at 240-832-4455. Vox Radio, along with Then Sings My Soul Productions, is pleased to announce Wyoming Paris' Then Sings My Soul musical. The TSMS group is seeking support in our movement concerning domestic violence. This soul-stirring stage production is not to entertain, but to educate, encourage, and help eradicate this horrible disease that's plaguing women, men, and children who are affected daily in households across the world. Please join us in supporting three-year-old Skylar Johnson's scholarship fund. Skylar's grandmother was murdered by her fiancé, then leaving Skylar's mother at age three to be raised by her uncle and maternal grandmother. To make your tax-deductible donation to a Skylar Johnson scholarship fund and for ticket information on Then Sings My Soul stage play in Brooklyn, New York on May 5th and 6th, visit thensingsmysoul.org. That's W dot then sings my soul dot org Vox Radio, along with Then Sings My Soul Productions, is pleased to announce Wyoming Paris's Then Sings My Soul musical. The TSMS group is seeking support in our movement concerning domestic violence. This soul-stirring stage production is not to entertain, but to educate, encourage, and help eradicate this horrible disease that's plaguing women, men, and children who are affected daily in households across the world. Please join us in supporting three-year-old Skylar Johnson Scholarship Fund. Skylar's grandmother was murdered by her fiance, then leaving Skylar's mother at age three to be raised by her uncle and maternal grandmother. To make your tax deductible donation to a Skylar Johnson scholarship fund and for ticket information on Then Sings My Soul stage play in Brooklyn, New York on May 5th and 6th, visit thensingsmysoul.org. That's w.thensingsmysoul.org. Enhance your listening experience. Boxwave.com. Check out all your favorite shows at VoxWave.com. On Mondays, we keep it moving with The Kim Show from 11 to 1 p.m. Then it's time for a change with Sherry and Mignon, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then, in the end, we win with Curtis, 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. On Tuesdays, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Start your afternoon with The Wealth Zone with Raymond Starks. Then it's Cooking with Flavors with Chef Flavors. 5 30 to 6 30 p.m. And treat yourself right with My Spa Bath and Body. Hosted by Margaret Harris, 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Up next is Slick Daddy Rick. Heartbeat Congo Hour. Rocking from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Then on Wednesdays, you can't miss Impact the World with Cheryl Woods, 12 noon to 2 p.m. And then from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., we got Slick Talk with Oscar D. and It's the Kid. Then from 8 to 9 p.m., we crank it up with Live Set Wednesdays, hosted by Reg Gaskins. And after that, 9.15 to 10.15 p.m., the BGKH Show with Dominion and Epic. And check out our Thursday lineup, starting with You, Math, and Me, hosted by George Randall, from 10 to 10.30 a.m. Then from 7 to 9 p.m., the 6.40 Evening Show with DJ 6.40. And on Friday, we start out with Peace in the Morning Show with Darius A. Stan, co-host Delicate Daryl Barnes, and Queen of Sudabay, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. From 10.30 to 11.30, The Hall Street Journal with Robert Hall and co-host Clarence Sanders. And after that, you know we got to check in with Chanel's Three Cents, 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Up next, from 3 to 4.30 p.m., Daryl Allen Hairston II Crime Victims Foundation Show with your host, Daryl Hairston. Then, 
in from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. is the Rush Hour with DJ Drew and Janique. And from 9.15 to 11.15 p.m., you can't miss Different Mind Show with Bam 640 and DJ Andre Michael, co-host Hillary Banks. Then start out your Saturday mornings with the Halo Blue Show, hosted by Ron Jackson. After that, 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., the Hour of Power with Reverend Winters Rogers. Then, from 11 a.m. to 12 noon, it's time for prayer, praise, and deliverance with Elder Thurman Gorman Jr. Four Sisters Live Talk, 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. Then every second Saturday, listen to Turning Dreams into Reality Talk Show with Tashika L. Green, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. After that, from 3 to 4 p.m., we walk in newness 24-7 with Missionary Antoinette. And don't miss, from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m., news, ULM News and Analysis, information, sports, black history, with your host, news anchor Roderick carter Willis. 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Then, from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., it's time for DJ Rick, the CEO of Step Your Game Up, the youth project, co-hosted by DJ Main and DJ Lo Hefe. And then, at 7.45 to 8.45 p.m., it's time for the Fantastic live show with MC Fran. And starting out on Sundays, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., I am Dr. Sharon Show with Dr. Sharon. And every first Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m., it's the Riri Williams Show Fashion and Style Hour. And every third Sunday, check out the Tea Talk Show with Dr. Akita Pearson, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Then it's time for Real Talk 101, 6 to 8 p.m. And from 8.15 to 9.15 p.m., we're tuned in to the Gospel Live TV show with Glory Mellow. Stay tuned to Vox Wave, where you can find all your favorite shows. The world's number one streaming music station, VoxWave.com. Release it. I've sown my seed, and I've given you glory. Say, I have declaratively praised you. So I wait, expecting my blessing right now. Applaud God in this room, everybody. Go on and give him some glory in advance. Clap your hands again. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. We are extremely blessed to be here this morning. Uh, if you know anything about family and friends and just people in general, this morning, uh, because Felicia and Kim uh, are not with, with us sitting up here on the stage, uh, they had prior uh, engagements. But we're going to get into something that has really been brought to my attention. And uh, again, your comments, your feedback is welcome, whether it's negative or positive, because all of the positive comments are for the glory of God. Your negative comments, because you don't like something or you don't feel a certain way about something, your negative comments are also appreciated because your negative comments, like the Bible said, are like your enemies. And you allow God to take those negative comments and your enemies and make them your footstool to lead you to your destiny. So this morning, we're going to touch on a few things. And uh, I want to first just pray and let's get this out the way so we can edify God and get his approval. Gracious master, we come to you this morning thanking you for another opportunity, God, because you didn't have to wake us up this morning and start us on our way with our ailments and with our um, different mindsets and with our different feelings, God, you still found favor in us and you woke us up and you allowed us to give your name, glory, honor, and praise. So on this very moment, at this very hour and this day, we give your name glory and we thank you, God. And we ask right now in Jesus name 
that you will allow your Shekinah glory to fall afresh upon this, this radio station, this message. And God, if there is anything that anyone gets out of this, God, you get the glory. I, I want no glory because your glory is yours and yours alone. Do what you've always done. Speak through these lips of clay. And at the end of it, we'll give your name, glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank all of you all in Facebook world, the Golden Girls, and uh, all of those that have tuned in this morning. First, let, let, let's read through a few things, and, and then I'm going to give you the topic, uh, uh, subject topic for this morning. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, it's been brought to my attention, to Kim's attention, to Felicia's, and just people around us that people in this day and hour just love to judge. Everybody's got something to say about whatever you're doing or whatever you're not doing or, or whatever is going on in your particular world. Uh, social media has allowed people to enter into people's lives and see the day-to-day -day activities, uh, what you're doing when you post comments on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, and, and everybody has their opinion or their statement about something that you're doing. But I'm here to say these things, and these things are not things that I've said. These are things that are biblically written in the Bible that deal with judging and being judgmental. Uh, I just believe, family, that judgmentalness is in our DNA. Uh, we, we just don't know how to not judge. We, it, it, if you see somebody walking down the street, you're quick to, to make a statement or, or to think a thought, and you're, that's being judgmental. Uh, Matthew, in the, in the New Testament, Matthew 7, 1 through 5 states this. It says, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the message you use, it is the measure that will be judged to you. Why do you look at and seek of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the plank out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye. Then Jesus goes on to say, you hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the plank or the speck from your brother's eye. John 8, 7 and 8 says, when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Then James 4, 11 through 12 says, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment of others. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy, which is Jesus the Christ. Romans 2, 1 and 3, you therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same thing. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you are a mere human, passing judgment on them, yet do the same things. Do you think you will escape God's judgment? Second Corinthians 5 and 10. For we all shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive that is due us for the things done while in this fleshly body, whether good or bad. And last, 1 John, 1 John 1 and 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All of these verses that I've read 
come from God's word in dealing with judgmental people. We have family members, church members, work friends, girlfriends, boyfriends that are judgmental of us. Uh, no matter if we're doing good or bad. It's, as I stated early, it's built into our DNA, into this flesh that we live in uh, because the flesh is corrupt. But my topic today, dealing, going forth, dealing with what we've just read, is coming from John 8, 7, and 14. My subtopic is, when did Jesus die and leave you in charge? And, 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 and I'm asking that question because we're so quick to judge when we don't know the whole story. We get information secondhand, thirdhand, off of social media, and we take it and we run with it because we think that we've got it all together. As a friend of mine said, Pastor Wingard said, we take it, we run with it, and our lives is just as raggedy as a bowl of yarn. If you've ever seen a cat play with a ball, a, a ball of yarn, you know the cat hits it every which way, and it's a total mess. But in this particular chapter of John, there's a woman that has been accused by a crowd of people. Here, this crowd of people that has accused this woman of a sin, they bring this woman before Jesus the Christ. The crowd of people, the same crowd of people are the same crowd of people that in an earlier text of the Bible were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, praise God. We love him. We adore him. And in the next minute, they were hollering, crucify him, crucify him. And the same woman that was brought before Jesus by this crowd of people stating unto them, this woman has sinned, Jesus. Let's look at this for a minute. Jesus being the author and creator of our faith, the one who can destroy us, who made us with just a thought. And it's amazing. When I start to look at this thing, Jesus at this very moment did not even raise his head up to look at the woman who this crowd of people had brought to him to condemn her. The Mosaic law at that time was Moses law because the people had no law. The 10 commandments were the law that were stated that everyone had to live by because there was no law. But Jesus, this, this, the, the, the very creator of heaven and earth, after these people had accused this woman or judge this woman trying to use the Mosaic law stated this, this woman has sinned. Jesus could have taken the Mosaic law and said, okay, we're going to live by it and destroy this woman, stone her to death, but he didn't. Jesus understood that the law was for the lawless, but because Jesus had compassion. And this is one thing that we as human beings don't exhibit enough of is compassion. You don't know a person's situation, but you're quick to judge. You don't know what hell that person has gone through or what that family has gone through or what that church member has gone through. But we're quick. Oh, did, girl, did you see how she dressed? Did you see how he came to church? He had holes in his disc. He, I, you don't know that person's situation. And instead of us going over to that person and pulling them to the side and saying, brother, sister, let's talk. What's the problem? What can I help you? We're quick to condemn and say, you know what? Because you don't fit in my status quo, because you don't fit in my group, because you don't make the money I make, 
because you don't live on the top of the hill in a gated community, because you don't drive a Mercedes Benz, because you don't drive a Maybach, because you don't sit on city council, because you're not a GS-15, because you don't make $150,000 a year, you got the mitigated gall to say, you're not in my clique, so now I can judge you. When did Jesus die and leave you in charge? You have the, the audacity to sit there and sit in your place and judge somebody because you think you got it going on or you got it right. Beloved, the only person that has the right to judge you and anything that you do is Jesus Christ. If you are not Jesus and he has not died and he has not left you in charge, sit yourself down. Make sure that your life is in order some kind of order because somewhere along the line you haven't got all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. When you do have all the I's, T's and the dotted, the, the, the I's dotted and the T's crossed, then you still don't have a right to judge someone else. I am a firm believer in what God says. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I never have been perfect, but I know a perfect God. And God is perfect. As we look further on into this, the scribes and the Pharisees brought this woman to, to Jesus. And they, they, they mimicked her. They wanted to publicly shame her in front of everyone. Not understanding that Jesus was the only one that had authority to condemn or remove the sin and the stain that this woman had committed. The Mosaic law said that this woman's sin was good enough to have her stoned in a courtyard with witnesses standing around. But let's take a, 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 a careful, a more deeper look at what Jesus did. There was two things that really struck my attention when I start reading this, the Mosaic law, the first thing, the Mosaic law stated that a person could be executed if there were two or more witnesses that saw this particular person or persons commit a sin. So right then and there, if you had two people that witness you break into a car, break into a house, steal goods or something from someone else, those two people could go to the council and say that this particular person or this person did this. And then the, the sheriffs or the, the police would go and get the person, bring them in front of the council with all of the, the naysayers and people standing around and tell the story of what this person did. The, that was the law. It said two or more people. Once these two people invoke this statement, then the council would take their word against the criminals, place them in a place to be executed, whether it was behead or stoned in public before their accusers. Deuteronomy 19 and 15 states this as the one of the steps in the Mosaic law. The woman in question was reportedly caught in the act of committing a sin, but nothing is mentioned about two witnesses. They just brought this woman before the council and Jesus. Where are the witnesses? No witnesses could be found. If no witnesses could be found, then the charge that was brought against her could be dropped. The law stated it. You have to have two witnesses. There were no witnesses. When we judge people, beloved, if you're not a witness to what happened, you're doing it off of what you think you know. Today, in our judicial system, there are plenty of people 
that are locked up on Trump charges because someone thought something or someone thought they saw something. Many of people are being released from prison after DNA testing has been done to prove their innocence. How can you give somebody back 30 years, 20 years of their life being locked up in prison on a trumped up charge, but then when you do the DNA testing and it finds out that the person was nowhere to be found, no witnesses. The second thing we find that if there were two, as I stated earlier, if there were two or more witnesses present to verify the sin of the woman, then this woman or man would be executed. That's stated in Deuteronomy 22 and 22. The, 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 the question is the accusing mob completely took what they thought to be the correct situation and ran with it. But the great thing about our God, when they brought this woman to God with the allocations of her sin, isn't it amazing that Jesus never lifted his head up to look at the woman? When the accusers brought the woman to Jesus, Jesus, instead of looking at the woman, bent down and began to write in the sand. The Bible declares that as he wrote in the sand, Jesus said these words to the accusers. He said, he without sin, let him cast the first stone. When Jesus said this, <laughs> Several theologians said, as soon as Jesus spoke these words, the very mob that said that this woman had committed a sin or judged this woman became convicted of what they were saying because they knew that they themselves had sinful lives and were sinners. The Bible declares that we are all sinners Saved by grace. We're not saved by anything that we've done because we live in this flesh and we are sinful people by nature. But to, to judge people, again, I go back and say, it's in our sinful nature. It's in our DNA. It's hard for us to not judge. You're judging me right now and that's fine. And I'm so grateful that I don't have to stand before you or anyone else. I have to stand before God. And God is the ultimate judge of all of us. Please understand, if you don't know God for yourself and have not accepted him as your personal savior, there is only one place once your judgment day comes, you will go. That's to hell. It does exist. But no matter how much I sin, you sin, and anybody else sins, if you have a personal relationship with God, you can ask God to forgive you, and he will. That is his word. He will never go back on that. He will wipe that out of your record in the Lamb's Book of Life. But let's get back to this, because this was very interesting. <laughs> When Jesus said this, the, the narrator said that all of the woman's accusers were gone. When Jesus finally looked up at the woman, he conveyed to her. He said, where are your accusers? The woman replied, I do not know, Lord. If your accusers are not here to accuse you, where are the witnesses? Jesus made the people who were accusing the woman or judging this woman look back at themselves. They looked back in the mirror of life and they understood that what God has just done has made us look back upon the sinful nature that we are, that we have, and that we've done. 
Jesus always showed compassion and, and a will to make the person or person's life better. He said in his word, I did not come to fulfill the law, but I came to make sure and redeem those back to me that belong to me. Apparently, accomplished by this group of convictors or, 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 or people or judgmental people who had come to hear Jesus, they actually thought that Jesus was, go was going to condemn this woman. Isn't it amazing how we think that we can think like Jesus? Like we can actually say, oh, well, God is going to do this. God is going to do that. The Bible declares that our thoughts and our ways are not his, like his. His are above ours. He created us. We didn't create him. And we sit here as these people did in judgment as if we have a heaven or a hell to put somebody in. It's always amazing to me how we can sit here and I'm included. I'm included because I'm a human being. We sit here and we judge when we don't know the whole story. And even if we do know the whole story, instead of us saying, you know what? Your situation, I, I, I understand what you told me. Let's pray about it. First thing we do, girl, did you hear what she said? And get on the phone. We on Twitter, we on Instagram, we on Facebook. We pick up, you know, it's not like it used to be back in, 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 in when we were growing up. Because when good gossip came, girl, did you hear what happened at church today? Deacon so-and-so is, 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 is this and, and girl, they, they said that some money was stolen from the church. And I know who did it. A couple of Sundays passed and the very thing that you heard, because, you know, the story, when it comes from the first person and goes to the second person and goes to the third person and goes to the fourth person, by the time it gets to the 15th person, it's, it's not the same story that was told when it first started. So now all of a sudden, the hundred dollars that was missing, somebody stole it. They don't know who stole it. A couple of Sundays passed. The money was left in the in the tied envelope that was put in the wrong basket, which was in the offering basket, and didn't nobody look inside of it to make sure that it, all the envelopes was out. But there is the hundred dollars. So again, we are so quick to run with information that we don't know. We are quick <coughs> to run with it, and when we run with it, we expect others to jump on it and be critical of what we're talking about when we don't know the whole story. And even if we do know the whole story, there are still intimate parts that you're not gonna get right because you're gonna add your flavor to it. It's just like cooking. You get to cooking something and you're like, okay, I like salt and pepper. Another person comes along and says, I like Obey. So they put Obey in it. Another person come along and say, well, I like onions. And you put all of this in there, but the original person who was cooking it for themselves didn't want all of that in. So now it's only suited for the last person who put the last ingredient in it. So now you got a mess. And that's what we are. We, we, love, to we love to dibble and dabble with mess. Jesus didn't deal with mess. He was very clear when he said, if any of you are without sin, cast the first stone. Nobody could throw a stone at this woman because Jesus turned the mirror of life around and made them realize all of the faults and sins that they had. And it's tough. When you got your own mirror and your own reflection looking at you, telling you, you sin on a daily basis. You mess up on a daily basis. 
You don't forgive on a daily basis. But we're quick to judge. Judge not that ye may be judged. I, I, I want to submit this to you. And I just want you to think about it. The way we judge people, the way we talk about people, because we think that we're in a place of authority, how would you like for the very way that you judge a person for God to come down at that very moment that you're judging that person and judge you? I, I got a friend that says it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. But you're quick to turn and talk about people. And the, the, the thing about it is, when you're, when you're judging a person, you're not helping that person. You're not helping those, those, those people or person at all. When, when have you taken time out of your busy, judgmental life or day to call a person up and say, hey man, or hey, hey lady, I judged you because of what you wore or what you talked about or what you stand for. But you know what? I'm not going to judge you anymore, but I want to meet with you so I can talk to you and see what your thoughts are and where you are in life. Can I help you? Can I help your family? Can I do something because I judged you and I was wrong because I didn't know the whole story. It's amazing. We as a people, if we ever take the time out to stop judging one another and start helping one another, what a better place we would be. I understand everybody is not a Jay-Z or a Warren Buffett where your pockets are so heavy that you can buy them anything they want. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being able to call a, a person, a family member, friend, apologize, ask for forgiveness, and ask them, where can I help you? What do you need help with? Is there something that I, that I can do for you to help you and your family, you and your friends, you and your children? but quick to judge. And then the, 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 the sad thing about it is you think it's okay to judge. And again, I go back and ask the question, when did Jesus die and leave you in charge? Because if he did leave you in charge, then everything that I believe and that I read in the Bible is not correct. None of us have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. Now, I'm not saying that you can't try to make somebody's life a living hell. But, beloved, we don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in. And, and if you don't believe we living in the last days, you just need to check and see what's going on. Because we are. And in this last hour, we should be trying to get closer to God closer to our family, closer to helping our families, closer to just being better than we were yesterday. And it's only by the grace of God. And that's what this woman received that day. She received God's grace and his mercy. But his grace is what overturned her case because she was a sinner. And she did sin, but his grace and his mercy is what pled her case. His grace basically took the Mosaic law, which was the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down and took those laws and pushed them to the side and said that my grace is sufficient because that's what we live under. We live under grace and mercy. Because none of us, let's just be clear, none of us are worthy. When I woke up, I should have been dead just like that because I'm not worthy. But his grace and his mercy sustains us all. 
and it allows us to do, breathe, live, and carry on. The old law made it clear that this woman should have been stoned to death. But Jesus' grace and his mercy pled her case. And it wasn't even, now, now don't get it twisted. Jesus could have said, be gone, thought it, snapped his fingers. He could have called down a legion of angels. This is Jesus the Christ, the creator of heaven and earth. He could have done all of that and everybody would have been wiped away. But he didn't. He spoke a word. He said, ye without sin, let them cast the first stone. In everything that God does, he wants to better and save his people. We are his people. We are his sheep. He does not want any of us to die but because we don't choose him as our personal savior and we want to do things our way. We are the only thing that God created that we want to do it our way. We want to do what we want to do. We want to say what we want to say. Do you not understand that when you judge people and when you make statements about people that your tongue is the most deadliest thing in your body? Your tongue can speak life and death into another person's situation. So when you judge people and you make comments about people and things that you have no knowledge of, you're doing it because that's what you want to do. That's what you like to do. And uh, let me put a pin in this. This is something that we like to do too. We love to dibble and dabble in what people did yesterday. I don't care what you did yesterday. Yesterday is gone. We need to worry about what's going on today. When we can take care of things in today, tomorrow will take care of itself. Nobody on this planet has lived a life where they've done nothing wrong. Some have been caught. Some have not been caught. So then you turn around and you say, well, this person did 50 things wrong. Okay. Who's keeping count? When did Jesus die and leave you in charge to count the mistakes that people make or judge when people do right or wrong? Children of God, people of God, when we take care of our business, our own business, and stop trying to take care of other people's business, and stop trying to live other people's lives. We cannot live other people's lives because we can't even get our lives right. We're quick to, we're quick to say, oh, they should do this, oh, they should do that, they should live here, they should drive that. They should wear this. They should eat that. Who, when did Jesus die and leave you in charge? And then we turn around and we judge people and our lives are raggedy. I'm, I mean, we think we got it going on. We act like we got it going on. But in reality, we're no better than anybody else. We're not helping anybody. We're not supporting anybody. We're not even allowing God to rule our lives and make us better. He, Jesus said, oh, hypocrites. That means a person that judges you, think they know everything, and then go back and tell or say stuff about you and know nothing about you. So I, I employ today, myself, again, myself included, I am in the pot. I'm not outside the pot, stirring the pot. I'm, I'm in the pot. We all need to take a better look at the things we say, 
the things we do, who we talk about. If we don't, my mother used to say, and my grandmother, and I'm sure all of us have had aunts and uncles and grandmothers, say, if you don't have a kind word to say, don't say nothing at all. And believe you me, even if you don't say it when you think it, God knows. He knows everything. He does not miss a thing in what we do or what we say or what we think. So I am employing you. I'm praying with you uh, that we will try to do better. We all need to do better. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm not claiming to be perfect, but I know a perfect God. His word is perfect. He is perfect. Anything that we have done in our past, leave it in the past. Bishop Bishop uh, Tyrone to Brett, Brett, mm, blah, blah. Bishop Tyrone to Bet, who is an awesome preacher, uh, Bishop in Bible Way, is Ty Trebet's father, is a real good friend of mine. He made the statement. He said, "When we are able to bury our past." It's like you're burying it in the deep sea and forget about it and move on with your life and better your life. You always have critics and people who will go put on scuba gear and go deep sea diving to bring up your past. But he said the one thing about it, he said, once God forgives you, he's quick to do it and he will never bring your past up against you. So I employ that we not be deep sea divers and remember that God can do all things but fail. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with you. Thank you and God bless. I've sown my seed and I've given you glory. Say, I have declaratively praised you. So I wait expecting my blessing right now. Applaud God in this room, everybody. Go on and give him some glory in advance. Clap your hands again. Today I heard. So glad today I heard you. I heard you clearly. Clearly. Now I'm grateful. Grateful. 
Everybody. message has helped. Uh, I know it has helped me. And I know that God's word is a word that will never leave and come back void. Uh, I believe we had uh, some questions or some comments. So uh, let's go. I just have comments. It's not really a question. And the comment is, uh, why is somebody else's happiness, if I'm saying it right, so important to you. If that person is happy within herself, why is it so important what's going on with that? You, it's like, <clears throat> you took all this time in the world to pull up old stuff. But like you said, if you don't know the background why is it in any of your business? You're not living that life. They're living that life. So why is it your business anyway? And everybody, I got to get a better understanding of being judged or judgmental. Um, go ahead, because I'm going to have to think of something okay. else. Let, let, let me say this to your question, okay? There were, when we were growing up as kids, it says, uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the group, when they said that, they clapped their hands. Right. Okay. You always have people. Okay. Let, let, me, let, me, let me put it like this. God has strategically put people in our lives to be haters. Okay. You have to have your haters, your enemies, your people that are jealous of you or your happiness. Because if you didn't have that, you would not draw a closer walk to God. Okay? If you're happy all the time and nothing gets to you, then that means that you don't have haters in your life. Jesus had haters in his life. Everyone that has ever been great had somebody or some people in their lives tell them, you can't do this or you can't do that. You will never amount to this. You will never accomplish this. But then God is in the backdrop saying, the very people that told you that you won't be this or you won't do this or you can't be this, you use that to go up the steps of life to get to your destiny. Your happiness is not predicated on how your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your children make you. Your happiness is predicated on God woke me up again this morning. And he started me on my way. That's where your joy and your happiness comes from. I, uh, you heard an old, old saint say, I'm happy in Jesus alone. Because once you understand that that's where your, that's your source. That's your source. None of us woke ourselves up this morning. God woke us up this morning. And he started us on our way. Some of us get up. Oh, man, I woke up. Okay. Don't even say thank you. And, and, and we start our day. 
Jealousy, judgment, judgmentalness, all of those are sin. All of those are, are demonic spirits that are formed that people have allowed to be in their DNA so they can give the devil some glory. And we're all, we, we're, listen, the Bible said we're born in this flesh in sin and iniquity. So as soon as you're born, as soon as you come out your mother's womb, sin is right there. Sin like, hey, I'm, I'm here. And then once you reach the age of accountability, you're like, okay, this is right, this is wrong. I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that. But sin is always there. Sin will be there until they put us in the grave and our spirit man goes back to where it came from. You just try to be better day by day. You, we can't beat it. You can't. It, it, it's just, it's, sin is like the air we breathe. It's there. And ain't nothing you can do about it except ask God to help you be better today than you were yesterday. People get mad. Oh, they talking about me. And I'm going to do something about it. Well, you can't stop people from talking. That's what they like to do. When, if you, there's, Some people just like messiness. Listen, there's 24 hours in a day. It's 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. If you don't have better things to do with your day than to sit around, gossip about something that you know nothing about or that you know a third about or you might know half about, but you don't know it all. If you ain't got nothing else better to do with your time and your attention, shame on you. Because you could, you could definitely be going to churches, going to nursing home, going to the hospital, go to your job. Uh, there are a billion other things that you could be doing than sitting around worrying about who's on Facebook, who's on Twitter, who's on Instagram, who said this, who did that, Who's, who's talking to this person? Who killed this person? Really? That's all. If, if that's the substance of your life, and if that's how you make your money, Channel 5 News, Channel 4, CNBC, NBC, all of them will hire you. TMZ, because they need people who like to go out and get in other people's business. Better yet, Go join the police department, work for the uh, homicide division, and go solve some cases. Because if you like sticking your nose in other people's business and pulling up their dirt, maybe you can go solve some of these cold case mysteries and get paid for it. At least you're doing a service by being nosy and digging into other people's business and other people's lives. But let G, I, I go back and I say this, let God come down and examine you that's doing the judging. And let's see how fast you ask God to forgive you when the heat is on. Everybody has something to say about everything you do in life. Kim, you said something that was so profound. You told Patrice, Everybody that says something about you that you can't do this, you can't do that, don't say nothing to them. Just prove them wrong. The best way to prove, the best revenge is to prove people wrong. Prove people wrong. Everything doesn't need a response. And my sister said it the other day, or was it, it was either my sister or Patrice, one of them. You can find in the wrong people. It's like you want to go talk to somebody because something is on your chat, on your heart to say or something is bothering you. But then when you go to that person, you go to the wrong person. Because once you go to that person, now it's all over the universe. It's all in the family. It's all with her family or all her friends and her job and all that type of stuff. You know, they, they told me you could find in the wrong people. Listen, I say this too. 
all of us as human beings want somebody that we can go talk to because we feel we're communicative people. So we want to talk to get it off our chest. Grandma said it best. Have a little talk with Jesus. We'll make everything all right. We like to go talk to people. And again, people do not hold your best value in place when they go and be and, and perform and criticize and be judgmental. Give you a great example. The very person that you criticize and you're judging, that will be the person that you will need to save your life or come get you out of jail or help you on the side of the road and you judge them. But they had enough God in them to forgive you for what you did and still help you. If you were hanging off of the edge of a cliff, nobody to save you, what would you do? Would you just let go and say, okay, I'm going to die? I don't think so. And if your enemy, if the person that you had judged or criticized came along, wouldn't you want them to help you up? Sure you would. Sure you would. The Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Before you start judging people and judging and, and, and being critical of what, look at your life. Now, please understand, misery loves company. So if you're miserable and the person next to you is miserable and the, and the other person that is, is miserable, then y'all love, y'all love to be judgmental and be critical of what people do. But shouldn't you want to get out of that? Shouldn't you want to feel happy, as you said, about life? If you, oh, I'm happy about, about it, my life. It, so. it, it, if, if, if you are on the verge of dying and the person that you judged has the blood or the kidney or the liver to save, or the bone marrow to save you, do you honestly think that they would do that for you because you've been so judgmental? And in closing, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I thank you all for, for tuning in. Isn't it amazing, and, and you said this when we were talking, isn't it amazing how when you get to a certain plateau in your life where you think you are it, and you've, and you've accomplished all of this and you're great, that fall from grace is a long way down. And everybody that you stepped on and talked about and judged to get there, you'll meet them on the way back down. Trust me, ask Lucifer. When God kicked him out of heaven, he's still trying to get back. But he never will. Just be mindful. Everything that you do to others, being judgmental, being critical of what they are, talking about them behind their back, even talking about them to their face and not providing any help is being watched. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We'll see you again next week. And I've given you glory. Say, I have declaratively praised you. So I wait expecting my blessing right now. Applaud God in this room, everybody. Go on and give him some glory in advance. Clap your hands again. Today I heard. So glad today I heard you. I heard you clearly. clearly. Now I'm grateful. Grateful. It's part of my circumstance. All I want to do is serve you and love you.
safely. Safely. Ever so bravely. Your foundation, your foundation stands sure. Stand